the fact is we're still in the Wild West uh, lands because there is no rule book. I mean, there's, you know, there are a, a considerable amount of studies available now about VR for rehabilitation different types, but they are very isolated in their approach and they're very um, monolithic in, in the way that they're looking to modulate a whole system, right, as us, a whole system with a single input. So VR is a single input, okay, just on its own. It's a visual input and the way we're designed evolutionary is our brain basically believes for the most part what our eyes see, but not, not all of it. And it depends how visually dominant you are in your learning style is. So what we're trying to do is take a multi-sensory approach to creating what um, what a sensory motor feedback loops because that's the way we operate. You know, if I'm if I'm trying to figure out is that cup of coffee safe to engage, the first thing I'm going to do is you know, come up with a command based on a, a, an Olympic system input that I want that hit, and as it makes me, I it makes me feel good. But I've got to then execute a motor function that requires various parts of the brain operating in a sequential uh, basis to reach out and grab it. But the kicker is, as soon as my hand comes in contact, the sensory system is dominant over motor and over whatever I think, because it's just going to react. And so that's what we're trying to do is initiate those sensory feedback loops that are telling the brain, oh, okay, this, this feels good, engage, or this doesn't feel good, back away, you know? so. Um, I think, I think that's something I'm really excited about. You know, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's diverse. You're tapping into multiple senses. Uh, you've got this gyro machine here. I've I've experienced once before that gets your balance equilibrium system going. Yeah, yes, you just showed me the experience with a whale where I felt the sound through my body as well as hearing it and seeing it. Uh, you use haptic feedbacks energy systems to, to zap them and electrical the, systems yeah yeah because again our nervous system um you know all of this is based on uh, electrical communication course. signals you know and what we're trying to do is replicate that in conjunction with those other inputs so the brain's going actually that that feels like it's supposed to feel um let's make that real mm. yeah well, so that's that's taking a lot of boxes straight up to get that subconscious learning and, uh, experimenting with new things uh, I was also really intrigued for the, the people who experienced strokes of just cleaning their teeth. Uh, this was a year ago you showed me this, so I'm sure it's better now than it was then. It's come a long way. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what sort of things have you experienced with that? Where, where did they start with and where have they got from the experiences you ran them through? That, what was that experience? Yeah, yeah. That, that project's still very much in, in a development phase. You know, we're still pre um, getting ready for... Uh, clinical trials uh, in, in, in Australia and in other, a couple of other countries. Um, the idea of that, of that approach, again, is looking at how do you create or, or regain function in a complex system that is not one thing. We're a bunch of complex systems that are all communicating together to give us functionality. And so, again, the idea was, well, VR is fantastic as a platform, but I... I often explain to people that I see VR as like when you go to a theatre, VR is a stage, okay? Mm. But it's how you populate that stage that greatly dictates how engaged the person's going to be in, in what you're, in the story you're trying to tell. And that's what you just experience with, with having the, you know, sort of the, the, the haptics vest on that, you know, um, sound is great vision's great but when you can feel things it just takes it to a completely different level so you're like wow this is, in, this is totally incredible and uh, i think then your subconscious would be do i want more of those experiences yeah i do because it felt good and it made me give a sense of wonder you know and that sense of wonder is from a from a neuroscience point of view um that's where learning is that's that's the golden state of learning that's what we're trying to produce so it's I suppose it's searching for a state of superplasticity to shorten the time frame to when we can grow new neural circuitry to take over the pathways that have been damaged or lost. Yeah. Yeah. What my first words when I, you showed me the, the whale experience, I took it off was I said, that's a psychological experience right there because I felt like it was there. And I've had VR before, so I, I've seen and heard, but that feeling really 
made a difference. And the my first experience with VR was a, a bow and arrow game with yep. little cardboard cutout yeah, guys yeah, yeah, to yeah, save yeah. the castle. Yep. <coughs> and uh, just the the pulling the thing back, the way the the feedback of the controller the vibrated. In there, yeah. That gave me the sensation that there was tension of yes. the bow. And I, I finished and I had a sore arm yep. because I thought I'd been yep. I'd been doing archery for half an hour. Yep. And, uh, and afterwards, it was just surreal. My mind was there. Yep. Uh, so muscular, I could feel that change. So that's where I really understood what it was you were doing and how that change can, can be there, that you can tap into the, the muscles and the neurosystem of, the body and the brain starting pre- a pre ingrained perceptions of what things should feel like based on how they look, mm. even if then even though they're not real, it still will, will act in a way as if it was. And so, the more inputs, more sensory inputs you put in, the more the brain, the, the left prefrontal cortex or the logical part of the brain is going, Yeah, look, I know this is not real, and I go, and then it's like it's 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 it's, it's encountering a state of wow, this is pretty believable, but there's still a bit. And each uh, amount of more uh, sensory input that you put in the matches environment, that part gets more and more overwhelmed. So it's like, well, well okay, well, this is this is real. I just have to accept that this is real and I have to act in a way that's consistent, that this environment is now real. Yes. Yeah, you, you're crossing that critical factor uh, with hypnosis. If we want to get a real change, we can sometimes bypass that factor by getting it go, giving it truths. So, <coughs> excuse me, it'll, it'll fact check something and you're like, yes, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. And after a while, it stops fact checking. It's like, it's correct. That's right. We're, we're on the right page. I'll just start accepting this. And that's what this is doing. You're going, yeah, well, this is close enough, close enough, close enough. Well, I can do this. Yes.